Hey everyone, Alex here. I am so excited to be able to tell you about Jet's brand new 14 inch steel frame saw. It's the JWBS 14 SFX. If you haven't seen this saw, it is definitely worth a look at. It is best in its class. There is another 14 inch saw out there with more power and more features than this one right here. Now, one of the first things that you notice on this saw is the spectacular fence and an extremely large work surface. This table can hold your large logs, things like that for your pole blanks. It's also great for resawing and it has bearing guide systems which a lot of saws don't come with so you have to continually readjust. Bearing guide systems stay set longer. You'll also notice it's extremely tall fence. Not only does it set up for tall, but we can simply loosen it, bring that over, drop that down. And you can see, now I can get close to the blade and still bring my guide all the way down close to my work project. So it's got a versatile fence as well as a large table. Now, we've got our on-off switch, and you'll notice that stop is real easy to hit in case something were to go wrong and you need to stop the saw. All right, now, we've got easy open doors on here. And you'll notice those heavy-duty cast iron wheels. You want that extra heavy wheel so that you have that inertia. To go with those wheels, it's got a horse and three-quarter motor, 110 or 120, so that you can get as much power out of the saw as you need. So resawing the full capacity at 13 inches is no problem whatsoever. Now, it has a twin beam frame. Most saws just have one solid square. This has two beams as well as the guard is welded to it. So it technically has three pieces of steel that give it its rigid construction. Most saws will stop at just putting a simple tube up there. Well, now, here on the back, you can see that it comes standard with a 110 outlet. That's so that you can hook a light to it, which Jet does offer as an optional accessory. You've got a quick release so that you can take the tension on and off your blade quick and easy. You've also got your thrust adjustment, which is standard, and your standard tension adjustment for fine tuning. This is your lock knob so that you can tighten your arm, which is a rack and pinion, and it's also square construction. The reason you want square construction is so that it's as rigid as possible. Think about it. If you're pushing a log through there or you're pushing a tall board through there, you're really putting a lot of pressure on that, and you want this arm to be as sturdy as possible. Now, you can see the horse and three-quarter motor here. You'll also notice that it has twin dust ports. The reason you want that is so that you can pull the dust right out from underneath the table as it's cutting, as well as the bottom of anything that gets into the house. Now, let's turn this saw back around because I want to show you just how easy it is to adjust everything on this saw, as well as how to take this table off so that you can get to those lower guides to get everything adjusted just perfect the first time. Remember, it's got bearing guides. Unlike guides that need to be adjusted constantly, once you set them up, you shouldn't have to mess with them anymore. And the only thing that you should have to adjust underneath the table is that thrust adjustment for different size blades, and that's a simple turning of the knob. In order to take the table off, it's pretty simple. We'll just slide that over, loosen those up, slide that fence out of the way, and then we just need to slide that right off the saw. We'll take our table insert out. Now, just so that it's easier for everyone to see, I'm going to take this rail off because we want to be able to look up underneath there and I also want to show you how easy it is to take this rail off should you ever need to. 
we're going to need a size 13 millimeter wrench. It's super easy to do. You don't even have to take the bolts out all the way. We just need to loosen them up. There are four underneath here that if we just simply loosen, you can see that rail comes right off. Now, some folks don't like that rail sticking out, so it makes it easy to remove should you ever need to. All right, now, in order to take the table off, I would suggest that you remove the blade. The way we do that is open up our doors, raise up on that quick release, and you can see the blade is loose. Now, before you pull that blade off the saw, it can be tough to get it out of that guard it's much easier to just simply lower the guard so that that blade lines up and it makes it a lot easier to come out of that slot. Just like that. Now I found after working with this saw that if you turn the blade 90 degrees and just give it a little tug, it makes it a lot easier to bring it right out of that slot than trying to fight with it and try to maneuver it out. Now, before you take the table off, I'll warn you, it is front heavy. So it's always best to have some sort of support here. I'm just gonna grab my roller stand. Very simple to just simply set that right up underneath that table. That way when I loosen those bolts in the back, it'll make it a lot easier so I don't have to hold the table and loosen the bolts all at the same time. But I'm going to turn the saw around so that you can see what I'm talking about. So we've got two nuts here and bolts running through the trunnion of the saw. We'll just loosen those two nuts up. Those nuts are a 16 millimeter. Now that we've got our nut and bolts out, now we should be able to slide that table right out of the way. Now we'll rotate this saw back around. We're gonna take these guards off so that you can see exactly what we're talking about when it comes to adjusting our saw. Now, next, we'll just remove our guards. and you'll be able to see those lower bearings. Now, don't be looking for that thrust bearing. It's not on there. It's actually on the bottom of the table, and I'll show you that here in just a minute. But we're gonna adjust these. The saw does come with the wrenches. So number five, we'll just loosen that up. And you can see that these work off of a barrel adjustment. And again, since they're a bearing guide, you're not going to have to do this very often. So that's why you want to take the table off and get everything adjusted the first time. Now, we're going to actually reinstall our blade so that we can adjust all of our guides to the blade. Now, the blade that I'm going to put on here is a 3 8 inch Greenwood blade by Carter. Jet does sell these blades. We'll just reinstall our blade. Just make sure that it's 
over both the wheels. Give it just a little snug. Don't pull all the way down. And the reason you don't want to do that with any blade or any saw with a quick release is when you pull all the way down, that blade may be in a different spot on sides or top or bottom. And if you pull too hard, you could twist that blade. So give it just a little rotation to make sure it stays on and then go ahead and give, you, give yourself full tension. Now, in order to adjust this, what we want to do is we want to adjust it so that the deepest part of the gullet is in the center of the wheel. We'll bring our guides back up about halfway. Now next we want to adjust our side guides as close to the blade as possible without it actually touching. The way that we do that is we simply loosen those up, move that into the blade, and you can see we don't want to push against the blade. We want it just as close as we can get. Now how do you know you're close enough? Well when I rotate that blade you can see that that bearing does not move but you can see it has as little travel as possible to actually touch that bearing. We'll do the same thing to the other side. You see we've got very little movement between the blade and those bearings. We'll snug that up and we'll move on to the top. Now our top bearing guides are on cams and those we simply loosen and rotate and you can see the bearing either goes in or it moves out by simply rotating that bearing. So we'll move that in close to that blade, same thing, rotate it to make sure that they're not touching or turning. Everything looks good there. Now the last thing we have to do on these top guides is adjust that thrust bearing. It works the same as those bottom bearings where it basically works off of a barrel adjustment. We bring that up as close as we can possibly get without it touching. Snug that up. Everything looks good there. We've got just a little movement there. A little movement there. We're now ready to do our last bearing adjustment and that's on the bottom of the table and I'll show you that next. Now the last adjustment which is your thrust bearing on the bottom is adjusted by simply adjusting your knob back here but it also has an allen screw in here because once you set it you don't want it to budge or move so we just simply want to loosen up this allen screw and by simply Rotating it left moves it forward. When you rotate it right, it moves that back. So we're going to back that away so that we can go ahead and reinstall the table and then we'll adjust that last adjustment on that thrust bearing. All right, now before you put that table back on, it's easier to just pull that blade off. So we'll loosen the tension and I'm going to, again, lower that guard. It makes it a lot easier to get that blade out of there. Now we'll put our roller stand back in place. Again, it's just the front weight of that table, so it makes it a lot easier to just put that up there so that you're not having to hold the table and put the bolts in all at the same time. Now, before you tighten those bolts up on that table, you're going to want to reinstall your blade so that you can line this up. You can see that this table has a slot so that it can actually move. That way you can line up that thrust bearing as close to middle as possible. So we'll get that roller stand out of the way. Now again, when you install the blade, if you'll just pull on that just a little bit, You'll notice it goes in there just a little bit easier. Then when you go to turn that corner, it makes it a lot easier 
to get that back on the salt. Make sure that it is over the wheels, both top and bottom. Again, give it just partial snug. Rotate that blade till it aligns. Bring it right back up to full tension. Now, we're going to adjust this table so that it aligns with the back edge of that bearing as close as we can possibly get. So we've got that lined up nice. Now we can go ahead and snug the table. One last thing you do want to check. You don't want this table off enough that it would rub up against the insert that you're putting in there. So make sure that you install your insert and make sure that blade's not rubbing against it. So now we can go ahead and tighten our table up. We'll adjust that thrust bearing as close to the back edge of that blade as we can possibly get. And we're just going to snug up that little Allen wrench on there so that we can be sure that it stays put. Last thing we have to do is put our guards back into place and then I'm going to show you what this saw can really do. We're going to leave a gap in there so that obviously that blade can come out. Snug that one up. Snug that one up, and just like that, those guards are reinstalled. All right, now we've got our guards installed. Everything is basically ready to go. So we're gonna close this up. dust collector. Now before we can resaw, we need to reinstall our fence. Show you just how easy it is to do that. We simply slide that into place, take our 13 millimeter wrench, tighten those four bolts back up. Slide that right back onto that rail. Then last, slide our fence right back into place. Snug that up. Now, a lot of companies like to tout that their saw has the capability of resawing 12, 13, however many inches the saw has the capability of cutting. Well, this one will cut 13 inches, and I'm going to show it to you. just run a quarter inch piece off of our 13 inch tall black walnut. Now we'll turn our dust collector on.
much cleaner cut or more accurate than that right there. If you are in the market for a saw, go see your local jet dealer. I promise you, you will never regret buying this saw. And you'll have the best customer service of anybody in the industry. Thanks for watching, everybody.